I'll sing you a song, a good song of the sea. Away, Rio, I'll sing you a song if you'll sing it with me. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio. Away, Rio. Fare you well, my pretty young girls. And we're bound for the Rio Grande. We're bound to know. <laughs> goodbye to Sally and goodbye to Sue. Away, Rio. And you that are listening, it's farewell to you. And we're bound for the Rio Grand. And it's away, Rio. Away, Rio. Fare you well, my pretty young girls. And we're bound for the Rio Grand. Well, man, the old capstan and runner around away, Rio. We'll haul up the anchor to this jolly sound, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio. Away, Rio. And fare you well, my pretty young girls, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. We uh, said a ship went a sailing out over the bar away, Rio. We pointed her down to the southern star and we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio, away, Rio. Fare you well, my pretty young girls, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. We'll sell our salt cod from molasses and rum away, Rio. And get home again for Thanksgiving come and we're bound for the Rio Grand. And it's away, Rio. Away, Rio. Fare you well, my pretty young girls, and we're bound for the Rio Grand. Goodbye, fair ladies, we know in this town away, Rio. We've left you enough for to buy a silk gown, and it's bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio, away, Rio. Fare you well, my pretty young girls, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. And it's away, Rio, away, Rio. And fare you well, my pretty young girls, and we're bound for the Rio Grande. I'm at a peak there because there's a couple of verses in Colcord that I don't know. And I, the, one of the things that I was really delighted to be able to do was go back and look at songs that I have in, in many ways learned in the oral tradition and not necessarily taken out of books, but then to go back to the original sources and go, oh, look, there's a verse here that I've never heard. Oh, this tune's a little different. That's really fun to come back and, and connect those two. And especially to find out about the collector. Uh, so this is Women's History Month. And um, of course, we all know there is a shanty craze on right now, right? Everybody's all, all bound to go for sea shanties. And so when somebody said, well, what are you going to do about sea shanties? What are you personally going to do about this shanty craze? I thought, this is it. I've had chance for a long time. I've been really, really interested in a woman who went around the world by the time she was 14. She was born at sea. Uh, she had traveled um, all over the place uh, in the China trade with her father um, and up and down the west coast of uh, South America, across the Indian Ocean, uh, up into Japan, Yokohama. She went to high school uh, by correspondence in Hong Kong. And so what I wanna do right now is to show you a little bit about Joanna Colcord because I am so fascinated by her that I have to share you my book report. And if you see the books behind me, um, Roll and Go, Songs of American Sailormen was the first one she put out and then a second um, edition with uh, expanded Songs of American Sailormen. And then uh, Edward Parker Albee wrote a wonderful book called Letters from Sea that collected all of the family letters. Um, 
and uh, it's a really wonderful thing. So I have uh, I've distilled some of that and included some uh, bits from the Penobscot Marine Museum and from a couple of other museums that have focused on Joanna Colcord. So I'm going to share my screen for a few minutes um, and want to know if you can see that. Can you now see my screen? Thumbs up if you can see my screen. OK, great. So Joanna was uh, born in 1882, uh, died the year I was born. And uh, I was actually had been around for about three months. Uh, so I never got to meet her, which is really too bad, uh, because I think I would have liked her very much. Um, she was fascinating. So she was born at sea on the Charlotte Littlefield in 1881. They were from Searsport, Maine, and they traveled for the next 20 years, she traveled with her family before she went to college at the University of Maine. I'm gonna take just a moment and stop Facebook because it's echoing. There we go. Okay. Can you hear an echo or is it just me? Good. Okay. So as I said, she took her exams from high school in Hong, in Hong Kong. Here she is studying on the deck of the Charlotte Littlefield. And um, this is an adorable picture of somebody who was born just off of the uh, South Sea Islands and on their honeymoon voyage. And you'll see a map in a little bit that's going to show the picture of her. But that's, a fir that's the first picture we have of Joanna Colcord and her parents from Searsport, Maine. And imagine a baby this size, um, born between Australia and Japan, and then photographed in Victoria, British Columbia. So I'm going to spend some time on the map here because I think it's wonderful. But just this is the quote that always caught me. This is from Songs of American Sailormen, and um, I have an ancient, ancient copy that I've had for a long, long time. Up to the age of 18, she spent most of her girlhood at sea on board ships under her father's command, sailing on China voyages. And from this experience, she acquired, as if by nature, the essential feeling of ships in the sea. Throughout her youth, she lived constantly in an atmosphere of seafaring, in a setting of ocean days, knowing none but the men and women of the sea, seeing nothing but ships and ports about the world, hearing no speech but the nautical vernacular. So it don't get more sailor than Joanna Colcord. And she loved the music. I still recall the thrill of hearing the crew of a British ship lying beside us in Shanghai singing the shanty goodbye fare you well as they heaved up anchor and of comprehending for the first time that this was beautiful and distinctive music. And she made a real effort. By 1924, a lot of the shanties were disappearing rapidly. And Roll and Go was published in, in 1924 while she was still able to collect from original shanty singers. So, so this, this is a, a the, the voyage, voyage that she went around the world on. And this is a model of the ship they did it in. This is the bark Harvard. And so she was 13 when they started, 15 when they returned, they carried timber and nitrate, guano from the, um, the guano islands in Peru. And this is one of the real critical parts about being in um, the shipping trade is that as a part owner of the ship, Captain Colcord would lose money if he had to sail in ballast. So often he'd have to go back and forth to pick up a cargo and every time he sailed in ballast, he lost that amount of money on the voyage. So I'm going to let you read that a little bit. But rather than go through all of that, I'm going to show it to you on the map. So they went around the Cape of Good Hope, across the Indian Ocean, then to New South Wales, west coast of South America, up and down the west coast a couple of times, and then took the train home on the Canadian Pacific Railway. So let's take a look at that. Here's where she was born, okay? Um, her parents were on their 
honeymoon voyage. They had come from New York. They had sailed around Tierra del Fuego and around the Horn, crossed the Roaring Forties to Newcastle. So during that entire time, um, Jen Sweetser Colcord was pregnant, gave birth to her first child right here, give or take, and then up through the Java Seas to Yokohama, and then back home um, by way of the South Coast. So that was their first voyage when she was born. If you'll take a look, you'll see that um, the one we're going to talk about most today was 1895 to 1897. But Joanna was traveling by the time she was small um, on board the Clara McGilvery uh, in 1889 and 90, in 1890 and 92 on board the Harvard to Singapore and Shanghai. And then this one I just love. So here, here they are, and they're going to come down and come across and down around the Cape of Good Hope, Durban and Port Elizabeth, up across the Indian Ocean, through the Straits, round to Newcastle, and then again across the Roaring Forties, through the trade winds to Moyendo, and then from Moyendo up in Ballast to Astoria to pick up another cargo, over to Portland, back down to Santa Rosalia, back up again to Victoria. And at this point, they just, um, it mentions that Mrs. Colcord was very ill. She suffered a miscarriage in a storm at sea. And it was very, very serious. So she was unable to travel any further. So she and the children who were then 15 and, and 13 traveled across the country with their ill mother um, on the Canadian Pacific Railway and back to Searsport, Maine. Meanwhile, uh, Captain Colcord brought the, um, from Victoria, brought down to Tacoma and then back to Iquique, right here. And these are the Guano Islands, right around here, Pisaga Iquique, the Chincha Islands. And we'll talk about more about them in a little bit. Um, and then Hunin, up down to Valparaiso, and then all the way back home around to New York. So it's an amazing set of voyages that they took. And then again later, um, Captain and Mrs. Colcord took Joanna with them on a round trip, casual little trip from New York to Hong Kong, probably again around the Horn across the 40s and up into Hong Kong, which is where, as I mentioned, she took her historical, uh, her um, high school of exams and waited months to find out if she had passed. So I think that's pretty amazing. And I love that story. And this is a picture of the cabin. And look at all of the wonderful fussy things <laughs> that are in the ship's cabin. All of that came out and, and was stowed, stowed for, this, this is, is a, as, as the cabin, cabin would have looked in port. And you can see the bark harbored, uh, the wonderful stained glass behind here. Um, Daily life in the after cabin was conditioned by two things, the weather and the ship's routine. The system of watches meant that at all times, except at mealtimes and the early evening dog watch, some one of the officers would be sleeping in his room at the forward end of the after house. Piano playing, yes, they had a piano by the captain's lady and noisy romping by the children were taboo except for those evening hours. The children played quietly on the starboard side of the deck if it was the mate's watch below and to port if it was the second mate. So imagine having to know that and having to know which side of the ship you could play on. On our ship, we came, became quite ingenious in developing quiet games. With dominoes for ships, we would charter, load and sail them on a chart spread on the cabin floor. Boys learned to splice and tie knots Girls learned to sew and do fancy work, and both, so soon as they were old enough, learned from their fathers some of the processes of navigation. 
And we know about several other women navigators and including um, Eleanor Prentice, who um, navigated the flying cloud that you've heard me sing about. So Joanna Colcord knew her navigation as well. And this photo I just loved. Philip scanned a whole bunch of photos for me, but this one, imagine a piano. How important it must have been to have a piano aboard ship. You really have to care about a piano to spend that much space. And the captain's lady would play the piano. So quite the, quite the scene with all of the little clocks and, and china vases and all of that would go away when they were out to sea. But this is again, decorated for port. And they talk a lot about, she talks in this article in the American Neptune in 1942 um, about the meals that they had, they, uh, fly, any flying fish that landed aboard were by custom sent after the captain's wife, unless the ship's cat got them first. And she's a little coy about this. Some masters carried hens, rabbits, or even pigs. And I have heard of vessels equipped with milch goats when they were young children aboard. And of course, this is how she heard. That's her brother Lincoln with his goat. And I love her little smile. She's just grinning at him. I think that's just a delightful picture of the two of them. I love it. Now, she sewed, she did fancy work. She worked at her book. She studied navigation. What else did she do? This is a little trophy that I found I was so intrigued by this quote. Uh, I mentioned the Chincha Islands. Um, one of the largest gatherings of sailing ships the world has ever seen took place during the 1860s and 70s. Remember that's 20 or 30 years before her time, but still when the Guano Islands of Peru were being feverishly stripped of their vast accumulations of bird dung to fertilize the worn out soil of Europe. Hundreds of ships of all nations lay there for months at a time, waiting their turn at the chutes. The islets were rocky deserts with no resident population. There was nothing to go ashore for until one enterprising captain's wife discovered a wealth of beautiful seaweed of all colors, which could be floated on paper and arranged in designs, which owing to the surface gelatin of the weeds were permanent when dry. A craze ensued to see which could develop the prettiest designs. And many a lacquered cabinet in New England coast town still harbors recent pictures made of Chincha Island sea mosses. So we've got an anchor here. We've got a, um, an eagle. And down at the bottom, you can see it's from the, uh, the Chincha Islands. It actually says so right on the eagle. And this, of course, makes me want to run right out and go get some sea mosses and do this myself. I'm just, I'm enchanted by this process. And I'm surprised that I have never heard of it before. Um, but I'm just, I just love it. And I, now I want to find out if New England sea mosses will do the same thing. So that was certainly one of the fun things that Joanna did on board ship. And her... She and her brother went by Nanny and, and Linky, Linky when, when they were little, little and, and Nan and, and Link. Link. Um, and she wrote her father, she had a little seat by the seaside to watch the ships in Searsport. So she spent about half her time at school in Searsport and then the half of the time they would take one child or the other while the other one was getting an education and education was very important to the family. And he apologized to her that he had bought her brother a bike, but after they lost to the Harvard, it was a terrible wreck. And it was a very dreadful time for the family and a lot of financial collapse ensued as a result. So they couldn't afford to, to buy Joanna a bike, but they rented her one. So both she and Lincoln were uh, part of the bicycle craze of the 1890s. And uh, some of you may know my song, She Drank Her Ale at the Bar, about a woman cyclist. And so I, uh, I like to think about Nan and her 18th birthday on her bicycle. <laughs> so that's fun. And this is a picture that she took when she was in Hong Kong. And they would rent 
a sampan as a transportation between the ship and the port. And when there was no um, need for it during the day, uh, the children could go on expeditions around the harbor. And they would play with the Chinese kids and exchange candy and sweets with them. Not a word of common language, but she said they had a wonderful time. So I've loved this picture um, because of what it really says about the cross-cultural connections that she had a chance to make. And you can tell that the family, although the little boy is a little uncertain, that I'll give you. <laughs> but mama thinks that Joanna and Lincoln are all right. And you can really, you can tell that she's, well, and also I love it because here's a woman with her hand on the tiller, which is pretty great. So we're gonna get to the songs because I know that's why you're here. Well, I don't know, maybe you're here for some of this too. And so she learned these songs from her father who loved them and sang them well. And there is, there are some quotations in her own work that talks about how the wives and daughters of the captain were not permitted to fraternize with the men. They could talk to the officers, but really only when supervised. And she's got a quote in here that says, they were supposed to behave as if the sailors did not exist. Well, that's fine for the American Neptune, but I call your attention to, I owe grateful acknowledgement to many shanty singers still alive from whose lips I have taken down many of the songs that follow. So she did spend enough time with sailors to collect these songs. Whether or not she did it when she was a young woman or much later, um, but she certainly knew what she was looking for by the time she was 20 and had traveled and listened to all these songs for most of her life. She's from a family that goes back six or seven generations. Her mother was also raised at sea. Yeah, so her, her mother and her grandparents were sea captains. Uh, so there's generations and generations of coal cords and uh, yeah, I, am I am told that they, they come down to the present day, day in the presence of one Bruce, Bruce Randall, who says he's related to the pull cords, which, which I thought was cool. Was cool. Yay, Yay, Bruce, if you're, if you're watching this. this. So, so what, what I, I thought I would do is take, take the way that, that Joanna herself organizes her Songs of American Sailormen into four categories of songs, and they're pretty short. So I'm just going to give you three in each category and see if we can get through a round dozen of them in a half an hour or so. We'll find out. But let me get some water here. So I'm going to just call attention if you're not familiar with what the um, man in the center is doing with his hands sort of leaping up on the rope. He's called sweating up the sail. And what you do is you give, you jump up, you grab and you let your body weight drag, drag down, down and, and then, then you push, push and pull, pull and it tightens the rope and you jump up and lie down and then push and pull. And then the men at the bottom are what's called tailing off and they are taking up the slack and they're gonna tie it off as soon as they can. So there, there's a great picture of them sweating up and this is what they would sing. Bonnie was a warrior, way a young, a warrior, a terrier, Jean Francois. Bonnie fought the Russians, way a young, fought the Prussians, Jean Francois. Moscow was a blazing way, and Bonnie was a raging Jean Francois. Bonnie went to elbow way, and there he got his overthrow, Jean Francois. Bonnie went to Waterloo way, there he got his overthrow, Jean Francois. Then they took him off again, way aboard the Billy Ruffian, Jean Francois. Bonnie went 
Broman, he broke his heart and died way up, away in St. Helena's Isle, Jean Francois. Give her the two gallon sails way up, it's a long way to Baltimore, Jean Francois. Driver, Captain Driver, way up, bust the chafe and leather, Jean Francois. Give it a good haul, Aaron. Tailor off. Thank you. So the next one I've known for donkey's years, and I love this one. Um, Holloway Joe is consecrated by usage to the sheeting home of the foresail. Of course, the uh, the ship on the the sail on the foremast. So. <clears throat> I'm gonna make sure that I get uh, just a couple of verses in here before we continue. So, when I was a little girl, girl, so my mother told me, way all the way, well, all the way, Joe's for you, Nicole, that if I did not kiss the girls, my lips would grow all day, way all the way, well, all the way, Joe, way all the way, well, all for better weather, way all the way, well, all the way, Joe. Way all away, we'll haul away together. Way all away, we'll haul away, Joe. Once I had an Irish girl and she was fat and lazy. Way all away, we'll haul away, Joe. And then I had a Yankee girl, she damn near drove me crazy. Way all away, we'll haul away, Joe. Way all the way, we're bound for better weather. Come away, all the way, we'll haul away, Joe. Way all the way, we'll haul away together. Timmy, way all the way, we'll haul away, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. I'm getting a little ring off the ceiling here. This is uh, amusing to sing shanties in an enclosed space. <laughs> so another classic and the oldest that they say was the uh, certainly in use in the reign of Henry VIII. I love this one. John Maysfield says it's a slow, stately melody ending with a jerk. That's a it's a wonderful combination of those two things. On the ball and the packet ship is rolling. All on the ball and the ball and all. All on the ball and Kitty is me darling. All on the ball and the ball and all. All on the ball and Kitty lives in Liverpool. All on the ball and the ball and all. All on the ball and the old man is a growling. All on the ball and the ball and oh. All on the ball and it's a long time to payday. All on the ball and the ball and oh. All on the ball and so early in the morning. All on the ball and the ball and oh. So a couple of short drag shanties for you there for um, small work around. And next for the halyards where you're gonna get a long line of men hoisting the sails. And I wanna actually read you a wonderful piece that um, one of um, Joanna Colcord's friends, a woman named, named by the name of Cicely Fox Smith wrote, they were contemporaries uh, and good friends. And of the Liverpool Street, in which is the scene of this little comedy, Miss C. Fox Smith in her recent book, Sailor Town Days, writes as follows. This is Paradise Street has had its day and in its way a fame as wide as any street in the world. Its name has been heard on all the winds that blow. It has broken the stately silence of the dawn on still tropic seas. 
It has mingled with the strong thrumming of the trades in sail and shroud and snatched from the lips of weary, striving, breathless, yet still undaunted men. It has added for a moment its puny note to the roar of the stormy westerlies. It has rung across the loneliest anchorages, the remotest harbors, mat thatched Malayan villages have heard it, and still palm ring lagoons and the huddled flat roofs of rose red cities half as old as time. Out on the river, a big foremaster, Frisco bound, is just getting underway. The wind is fair, and already she's hoisting her topsails, ready to drop the tug's hawser as soon as she's clear of the anchorage. The mate, a big raw boned blue nose with hands like hammers and a mouth like a slit across his lean face, is storming about the deck, trying to rouse the half drunk, half dead crew to some semblance of willing liveliness. Now then, are you sailors or corpses or what are you? Ain't there a shantyman among the whole blame crowd of you? And the crew remaining unresponsive, he bursts forth himself in a voice which is strong rather than melodious, accompanying the strains with a sort of obligato of comments and exhortations, more pointed than polite. As I was a walking down Paradise Street, hey, way, hey, blow the man down, a Liverpool Bobby, I chance for a mate. Give me some time to blow the man down. Says he a black baller, but I cut a your hair. Way, hey, blow the man down. I know you're a black baller by the clothes that you wear. Give me some time to blow the man down. You've sailed in a packet that flies the black ball. Way, hey, blow the man down. You've robbed some poor Dutchman of boots, clothes, and all. Give me some time to blow the man down. Oh, policeman, policeman, you do me great wrong. Way, hey, blow the man down. I'm a flying fish sailor just home from Hong Kong. Give me some time to blow the man down. They gave me six months there in Liverpool town. Way blow the man down for kicking a policeman and blowing him down. Give me some time to blow the man down. And to blow him, of course, is with a blow to knock him down. So sometimes, you know, we've heard them all a million times, but they're old because they're good. They're not just good because they're old, they're good ones. And one of the things I find every time I dip in to um, songs from American Sailormen or from, to Roll and Go is, oh, oh, I know that one. And oh, I remember this one and they're old friends in here. So I'm gonna take you next up to one of my oldest favorites that I've learned long before this. Oh, I'm a gonna leave you shallow, oh, shallow brown. I'm gonna wait to leave you shallow, shallow brown. Gonna get my clothes in order. Shallow, shallow brown. I'm off across the border. Shallow, shallow brown. Oh, the packet sails tomorrow. Shallow, shallow brown. I'm leaving you tomorrow. Shallow, shallow brown. I love that one. 
I just, it's such a yummy tune. Sounds very musical coming across the still water. And I'm doing these in the order that she gives them um, because you got to give them in some order. And this is as makes sense as much as any because she tells a story in the books. And as she goes, and I encourage you to uh, find yourself a copy that you can pick them up on eBay for not very much these days. Uh, you can find them on eight books. Um, and they are both Roll and Go and Songs of American Sailormen are utterly essential to any shanty folk repertoire that I know of. Um, so I recommend it that you find yourself a copy if you don't have one already. And this one is um, talks about the dead horse. And I'm again, I'm I have experienced this myself, but I'm going to read to you from her. Um, a celebration was held on board ship when month, one month at sea on British ships. I've never heard it on American ships. Sailors received one month's pay in advance before leaving port and of course duly spent it. After one month at sea, it was considered that the dead horse had been worked off and a rough effigy of canvas and straw remotely resembling a horse was solemnly carried about the deck as the song was being chanted and then hoisted off the yard arm, cut away and allowed to float off astern. And if you've been to Mystic Seaport, you'll know that they do the dead horse ceremony um, on board the Morgan and, um, or on board the Conrad, I think. Um, yes, I think on the Conrad. And that's uh, as I recall. And uh, I have most importantly sung the dead horse on the day I paid off my student loans. <laughs> was very important. I was uh, It was a, a Folk Song Society of Greater Boston concert, and I leaped to the stage and sang the Dead Horse Shanty with a check in my hand. <laughs> I say, old oh man, your horse will die, and they say so, and they know so. They say, old oh man, your horse will die, oh poor old horse. And if he dies, we'll tan his skin, and we say so, and we hope so. And if he dies, we'll tan his skin, oh, poor old horse. And if he lives, we'll ride him again, and they say so, and they hope so. And if he lives, we'll ride him again, no oh, poor old horse. We'll hoist him up at the main yard arm, and they say so, and they hope so. We'll hoist him up to the main yard arm, oh, poor old horse. And now he's dead, we'll bury him deep, and they say so, and they hope so. And now he's dead, we'll bury him deep, oh, poor old horse. And there again, those may not be the words you're used to, but those are the words that Colcord collected. So it's been a good chance for me to find a new couple of new sets of verses. So there's a couple of halyard shanties for you. I'm gonna skip ahead um, and take a little dog watch now, uh, because of course, as the watches were divided up into eight hours, there was a four hour shift to offset the watches so that you didn't always have everybody, the, the same sailors doing the night watch all the time. So I'm gonna skip ahead from the order that uh, Colcord gives and give you one of my absolute favorites, but I'm gonna make sure I have the text. Here we go. Because she has slightly, again, she has slightly different words than I use. 130. Told you it was a book report, but it's a it's a chance to go back to the book, which I think is an exciting thing that that we get to do on Zoom. You know that we don't necessarily otherwise do, um, but uh, it's a it's a chance to show some the process of research because I go back and and uh, do this kind of stuff on my own, um, and so a chance to share some of it uh, with some of you is really fun. 
Now what a fence has been told, uh, the British seamen bold would flog the tars of France so neat and handy, oh. They never met their match till the Yankees did them catch. The Yankee boys for fighting are the dandy, oh. The Guerriere, the frigate bowl on the foaming ocean roll, commanded by Pro Dacres, was a grandio. With his choice of British crew, as a rammer ever drew, could flog the British Frenchman two to one, so handy o. When this frigate hove in view, says Pro Dacres to his crew, Come clear the ship for action and be handy, yo. On the weather gauge, boys, get her and to make the men fight better. Give them to drink gunpowder mixed with brandy, yo. I think I've had some myself. <clears throat> then Drake Chris loudly cries, make this Yankee ship your prize. You can in 30 minutes, neat and handy, yo. Twenty-five's enough, I'm sure, and if you do it in a score, we'll treat you to a double shot of brandy, yo. Now the British shot flew hot, which the Yankees answered not, till they came within the distance they call handy, yo. Says Holland to his crew, let us see what we can do. If we take this boasting Britain, we're the dandy -o. The first broadside we poured carried a main mist by the board, which made this lofty frigate look abandoned. Oh, then Dacre shook his head to his officers. He said, Lord, I didn't think those Yankees were so handy. -o. Our second told so well that her fore and mizzen fell, which doused the royal ensign neat and handy. Oh, by George, he were done, and they fired a lee gun, and the Yankees struck up Yankee Doodle Dandy. Oh, Yankee Doodle went to London riding on a pony, stuck a feather in his hat and called it macaroni. Yankee Doodle, keep it up, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Mind the music and the step and with the boys be handy then dacris came on board to deliver up his sword which he was loath to lose it was so handy oh oh keep your sword said hull for it only makes you dull cheer up and let us have a little brandy oh now fill your glasses full and we'll drink to captain hull and merrily we'll push about the brandy oh john bull may toast his fill let the world say what it will the yankee boys for fighting are the dandy oh the yankee boys for fighting are the dandy oh the yankee boys for fighting are the dandy oh then john bull may toast his fill let the world say what it will but the yankee boys for fighting are the dandy -o. And that last little chorus there is actually John Roberts put in a piece of Hull's victory and mended a chorus to that, which I just love and I've recorded. Um, and fun fact about the battle, uh, the first broadside we board carried her mizzen by the board. In fact, her mizzen mast was the first one to come down and then her fore and mainmast. But you only know that if you study paintings of the period, which is kind of fun. And if you go out on YouTube, uh, maybe I'll post this after the show, you will see my band recording of the Constitution Extravaganza, which is the Constitution Hornpipe and the Constitution and the Guerriere and Hull's Victory all together illustrated with um, period paintings of every single verse has been painted in that ballad there are so many photographs there are so many paintings of constitution that you can illustrate the whole song and never repeat which i thought was pretty cool so this next little bit i learned something about joanna colcord which is that i think she set this tune which is kind of fun the air to the next song was taken from an old English ballad, The Baffled Knight, and the words were copied out of an old long book, log book in the New Bedford Public Library. Certainly sounds like she said it, doesn't it? Could be, we don't know. But somebody took that air 
and set it to this tune. Now, in the absence of any further evidence to the contrary, and knowing as we do that collectors do a great deal to fit up words to tunes, I'm saying that we have Joanna Colcord to thank for this tune to these words. Tis advertised in Boston, New York, and Buffalo. A hundred, five hundred brave Americans a wailing for to go singing, blow your winds in the morning, blow your winds high oh, Clear away your running gear and blow, boys, blow. Clear away your running gear and blow your winds high oh, That's how she goes it. They send you to New Bedford, that famous whaling port, and give you to some land sharks to board and fit you out, singing, blow your winds in the morning, blow your winds high ho clear away your running gear and blow your winds high ho They send you to a boarding house then for a time to dwell, the thieves there are thicker than the other side of hell, singing, blow your winds in the morning, blow your winds high ho Clear away your running gear and blow your winds high oh. I'm gonna pick out some verses that are less familiar because there are about 22 verses in here from the old log book. So I'm gonna sing the ones I don't know. As for the provisions, well, we don't get half enough. A little piece of stinking beef and a blame small bag of duff. Singing blow your winds in the morning, blow your winds high oh. Clear away your running gear and blow you in high oh. Now comes that damned old compass, it will grieve your heart full sore. For theirs is two and thirty points, and we have forty-four. Singing blow you winds in the morning, blow you in high oh. Clear away your running gear and blow you in high oh. The coopers at the vice bench are making iron poles, and the mates of my, mates upon the main hatch are cursing all our souls, singing blow you winds in the morning, blow you winds high oh, clear away your running gear and blow you winds high oh. Now clear away the boats, my boys, and after him we'll travel. But if you get too near his fluke, he'll kick it to the devil, singing blow you winds in the morning, blow you winds high ho. Clear away your running gear and blow, boys, blow. Now the boats steer her overside the tackle holes. The skipper's in the main chain, so loudly he does ball, singing, blow you winds in the morning, blow you winds high oh. Clear away your running gear and blow you winds high oh. Next comes the stowing down, my boys, who'll take both night and day. Y'all all have 50 cents apiece on the 190th lay. Singing, blow you winds in the morning, blow you winds high oh. Clear away your running gear and blow you winds high oh. Now we are bound to Tombus, that blasted whale in port. And if you run away, my boys, you surely will get caught. Singing, blow you winds in the morning, blow you winds high oh. Clear away your running gear and blow your winds high ho. Oh. Now we're bound to Kuna, full more in their power, where the skippers can buy the consul up for a half a barrel of flour. Singing, blow your winds in the morning, blow your winds high ho. Oh. Clear away your running gear and blow, boys, blow. When we get home, our ship made fast and we get through our sailing. A whaling got a winding glass around, we'll pass and damn this blubber whaling. Singing, blow your winds in the morning, blow your winds high oh. Clear away your running gear and blow, boys, blow. And it's really, really hard to remember that it's blow your winds high oh in her version. <laughs> so aren't those fun verses? I think they're really neat. They're, they're different than the ones that we, we usually sing. So there again, it's a, it's a good chance. Where are we looking for Boston here? There we go, 68. So this is from Boston Harbor, we set sail, um, but it's just, she just gives it as Boston. But of course I had to do it. 
from Boston Harbor, we set sail. Wit was blowing the devil of a gale, where the ring tail sat all above the mizzen peak. And our dolphin striker plowed up the deep with a big bow wow, tow row row, fall de roll de ride all day. Up comes the skipper from down below. He looks aloft and he looks alow. He looks alow and he looks aloft. Saying, coil up your ropes there fore and aft with a big bow wow, tow row row, fall de roll de ride all day. Down to his cabin he quickly crawls, unto his steward he loudly falls. Go give us a drink that'll make them cough, for it's better weather here than it is up aloft. With a big bow wow, tow row row, fall de roll de ride all day. Now we poor sailors are working on the deck with blasted rain pouring down our necks. Not a drop of grog will he to us afford, but he damns our eyes with every other word. With a big bow wow, tow row row, folly roll, de ride all day. <coughs> Just one thing we have to crave, the hymn to meet with the watery grave. We'll throw him down into some dark hole where the sharks will have the body and the devil take a soul with a big bow wow, tow row row, fall de roll de ride all day with a big bow wow, tow row row, fall de roll de ride all day. Thank you. <clears throat> Fix me a glass that'll make me cough. Ain't that the truth? So a couple of folks will songs for you and then you notice they tend to be longer because what else you got to do but sit around and sing. Rio Grande we've had already. So we're gonna have two more tonight just to finish us off. And uh, I love this quote that this, the grandest of them all says Rio Grande can never be forgotten when it has once been peeling over a quiet anchorage while the musical clatter of the windless palls adds a quaint accompaniment. And of course, we all know this song as Cape Cod girls don't use no combs. Heave away, all away. They comb their hair with the codfish bones and we're bound away for Australia. So heave her up, my bully, bully boys. Heave away, all the way. Heave her up and don't you make a noise because we're bound away for Australia. And Cape Cod go boys, they've got no sleds. Heave away, all the way. Make slide down hills on codfish heads and we're bound away for Australia. So heave her up, my bully, bully boys. Heave away, all the way. Heave her up and don't you make a noise and we're bound away for Australia. And Cape Cod cats, they have no tails. Heave away, all the way. They lost them all in the Northeast Gales and were bound away for Australia. So heave her up, my bully, bully boys. Heave away, all the way. Heave her up, and don't you make a noise and we're bound away for Australia. And that's enough of that because there's uh, six or eight more verses and I've sung you some long ones. Oh, yes, more water. Thank you. I've already finished off once. There we go. All right, every voyage must come to an end. And this one is, and our last capstone or windless shanty is for up anchor for the homeward voyage. And I'm gonna encourage you again to get yourself a copy of, um, songs of american sailormen and roll and go and particularly to get yourself a copy of letters from sea by uh edward parker albee it's a fascinating fascinating book so i hope you have enjoyed my little book report 
And I'm going to finish this off with one more day. Page 115 in your hymnals. <laughs> oh, have you heard the news, my Johnny? One more day. We're homeward bound tomorrow, Johnny. One more day. Only one more day, my Johnny's one more day. Oh, rock and roll me over, Johnny, one more day. Oh, we're homeward bound tomorrow, Johnny, one more day. We'll leave you without sorrow, Johnny, one more day. Only one more day, my Johnny's one more day. Oh, rock and roll me over, Johnny, one more day. Can't you hear the old man snarling, Johnny, one more day. Oh, can't you hear the capstan Paul in one more day. One more day, my Johnny's one more day. Oh, rock and roll me over, Johnny, one more day. Heave inside the anchor, Johnny, one more day. Oh, heave inside the anchor, Johnny, one more day. Only one more day, my Johnny's one more day. Oh, rock and roll me over, Johnny, one more day. <clears throat> oh, I'm bound away to leave you, Johnny, one more day. But I never will deceive you, Johnny, one more day. One more day, my Johnny's one more day. Oh, rock and roll me over, Johnny, one more day. Only one more day, my Johnny's one more day. Oh, rock and roll me over, Johnny, one more day. Mass even. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I would encourage you to unmute and discuss. Hooray! Thank Wonderful. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Did the teacher I, like my I've book report? Been, I've always been going to read this, you see. And ah, so yes. <laughs> I just waited until I didn't have to right away and got the book report. And <laughs> That's it. Work. Well, I realized recipe, as I was recipe putting recipe this report. together that it was in fact a book report and I thought I might as well just make use of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Joanna Colcord was a name on the cover of a book. And I, I always, you know, it was like, okay, I'm, one of these days, one of these days, one of these days, I'm going to know why I know these songs because I'm going to actually read it. But it took me a while. Thank you very much. Isn't she cool? Yes, indeed. I think she's I really, exceptionally cool. I really I love, I love these the way songs. that you did the map showing us all of the yeah. different. Yeah, that places. was very big, very good beginning. Let's just give us the whole suite. My undergraduate and graduate work was in that? geography and women's studies. Perfect. <laughs> so I'm trained for this. <laughs> but just to stop, and trace the map and think, my God, two years. That's a long time. And they, there were, I mean, incidents. I mean, were they ever in danger or? In oh, horror? yes. I mean, they must have had a lot of weather. I mean, you can't just. They, they had a lot of very gentlemen. serious weather. I can't imagine doing such a thing, but they lived through it and. Prosper, there was um so she tells stories about other women born at sea she says i'm grateful <laughs> that my parents didn't name me caledonia which was the closest island <laughs> to where she oh, was God. born she knows somebody named she knew somebody named ionia 
from the Ionian <laughs> Islands. She knew another woman who uh, was born actually in an open boat after a shipwreck had wrecked the main vessel. Wow. So imagine a pregnant woman imagine. having to be actually in labor, having to be taken off a vessel in a storm, put in a boat and giving birth in the boat. Wow. Can't imagine. Not no, these are, these are tough ladies. <laughs> and you, ha you just have to expect anything. I guess you do anyway, never having had a child. I don't know and I can't imagine, but you just know anything could happen and you can't really have much of an expectation. You just take well, and they comes. And you look at that voyage that they took, I'll go back. Yes. Um, because um, when, oh, I sorry, I have, I have one more quote for you, but I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Back, 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 back. <laughs> I want to go back to the map because I love the map. The map is cool. <laughs> so You're a map person. That's right. I am a map person. I'm a map nerd from the get-go. So here they are. They've come all the way around, right? They've come through the Indian Ocean. They've come through to Newcastle. They've come across the Roaring Forties. They've come all the way up here. And as they come in to the Columbia Bar at Astoria, there is a very, very bad storm and they have to put out of the bar and um, Mrs. Colcord is very, very ill and she's having a miscarriage um, off of the Columbia <clears throat> Bar. And so they can't be brought in. They, they, are, they have to go out to sea because otherwise they'll get wrecked on the bar. Right. <laughs> and as it turned out, she was too ill um, to continue the voyage. So after that, now she's got to go home on the train. Jolly, jolly. And then, so imagine 15 year old Joanna. I mean, she has to have been taking care of her mother at this point. Yeah. And her brother was pretty tough as well. But, um, you know, says here they go. And it's kind of nothing, right? That after all they've done, there's this casual mention that they go home by train. train. Well, that's a train across the Canadian Pacific Railway across the entire country. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, <laughs> you know, eh. With the latest technology. <laughs> that's right. And that was considered more comfortable and safer than going <laughs> back. The rhythms were regular, <laughs> more yes. or less. <laughs> yes. Wait, what year was that? Buffeted about. <laughs> um, let's see, I have to move my little thing here. Um, all right, so that was 1897. Oh, okay. What season? What, I mean, what, what year, month would it be? Um, boy, you're really asking me because oh, I, I don't know this which of the little stickies in this book this is. <laughs> is it? Yeah, I would have mentioned if it wasn't. See all of my stickies? <laughs> if it was snow and storms or mud or whatever, they might have mentioned it, but who knows? I was just, yeah. just curious what the season was. So I have, as you know, done, um, you know, individual voyages, right? I've done Gudrid's, you know, I've, I've, I've looked at Gudrid the Wanderer and the Viking, and I can retrace her footsteps, right? I know where she went. Um, I've done Lisette Laval for 25 years and I know and you know have traveled where she traveled um, across Canada, um, all across the Voyagers Highway to British Columbia. Um, and I know those routes and I've mapped them. This one just blows my mind. This is the biggest map I've gotten my head around. Joanna Colcord has more miles on her than I could ever hope to have. Mm -hmm what the sea captains do all the time. Mm -hmm. That's right. So Bruce, I'm dying to know, how are you related to the Colcords? Throw my, my father's side, my grandmother. We always call, we always pronounce it Colcord. Is it Colcord? All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, wow. Then I stand corrected. She, my, my father's mother was related to the Colcords and I don't remember the I'd have to get out the chart, and I don't know where the chart is. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. 
Fair enough, but it's still, all right. So now I know how to pronounce it after the entire program, but mm. this never, one's never too late to learn. Well, I might be wrong, in which case I will learn something. Different but, generations uh, pronounce things differently. Yeah. That's right. You know, is it Concord or Concord? <laughs> Different, oh, yeah. Quincy or Quincy? <laughs> Oh, well, that's that, that was like words away. in our house. <laughs> if somebody only says one that they live in Worcester, well, you know that they don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there were still several accepted pronunciations of that. So, <laughs> yeah. I think there would be still arguments about the exact vowels. And so, one of the interesting things I find about her is that she didn't apparently self identify as an adventurous woman. It was just it was life. just you know she did lace she did fancy work she did mm. her studies she actually majored in uh, chemistry at the university of um maine went on to do chemistry for graduate work and eventually oh. decided that she'd rather work with people than things and became a social <laughs> worker and she Gosh. worked for the russell sage foundation in new york and that at most amazing. of her career had to make the choice between marriage and a family. She married very late in life. And mm. all I know is a little note that says she married the recently widowed friend, Mr. Bruno. So presumably they've been friends for some time Gee. and then he lost his wife and she married him. Yeah, it happens. And it does, Yeah, it mm -hmm. does. But apparently I, I like to think they had been friends for some time and then they, uh, had a, another relationship that deepened that, which is lovely to think of. It also suggests that she wrote the book while she was raising her own children. Because um, the first edition is 24, right? And she would have I, been uh, 41 or something like that? Yep. And you say um, she married late, so. She married late. I'm not aware of any children. Do you have, yeah, maybe okay. not. Well, but then again, the, the um, later ends of her life was not as interesting to me as the early days when she was at sea. So that was what I focused on for this presentation. A full biography is not within scope at this time. <laughs> <laughs> but you never know when I get interested in something where it's gonna go. <laughs> so. Anyway, I want to share with you one quotation that when she went to publish Roll and Go, um, she originally, her plan was to publish it under the, her initials, just J.C. Colcord, because she was afraid that nobody would take her seriously at the time. And her brother gave her unmitigated heck for this. Ah, good for him. Now I sit me down to complain of your decision and your arguments as to the way your name is to stand on the title page. Neither are worthy of you, Nan. You deliberately propose to dodge your sex for obscure psychological reasons. Not a reason you give will hold water for a minute. There is no objection at all to having a woman collect a volume of sea poetry. No reader would raise a question about it for a moment. There is no objection to a woman's having been to see. It only adds to the interest of the occasion. Here is something new, a real sailor woman. You have a good right to your sailor knowledge and I am proud of it whenever I think of you. You ought to glory in it and make all the capital there is of it. And I'm having that on a t-shirt. What do you say, that Nicole? Great. <laughs> that <is> great. <laughs> there is no great. objection to a woman's having been to sea. It only adds to the interest, interest of the occasion. Of the <laughs> no, if that were true, oh man. <laughs> I, I wish so hard that there were more cheerleaders like that. Yeah. Oh, don't I just. So I thought that Lincoln, Col Lincoln Colcord actually got to get a round of applause for yeah. being an ally. Yay, Lincoln. <laughs> and he's quite a writer in his own right. Um, he's a fascinating character. And, yeah. and again, if you read Letters from Sea, uh, you'll see some of his, uh, some of his writing. He, she became a photographer and that was how she captured mm -hmm. her own love of the sea. He wrote. Uh, relatively few of her photographs survive, but some of his writings do. 
and there again, I mean, uh, more book report, um, but take a look at Letters from Sea. So, so that's what I've got for you tonight. Your presentation was obviously beautifully produced as well as well-researched. Uh, were well, those you. illustrations from her book or things that mm -hmm. you assembled? Or? Um, the photographs are either from Edward Parker Albee's book or and where he got many of them were from the Penobscot Marine Museum where a lot of her work is um, collected. Uh, the Cape Ann Museum actually had the Chincha Island Moss slides. Um, and there's a lot available on in digital collections now, but special thanks goes to Philip who scanned a lot of the slides for me. Yeah, we came off very well. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I realized what I have not done is put footnotes in here, but Edward Parker Albee, uh, Letters from Sea, um, and sorry, Parker Bishop Parker Albee. Bishop Albee. Parker that, Bishop Albee, Letters yeah. from Sea, Joanna and Lincoln Colcord, Seafaring Childhood. And I believe I've, this is, I love the, I love the secondhand books part. I actually have a signed copy. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting to hear that she crossed paths with uh, Cicely Fox Smith uh, it would be wonderful if they had established a correspondence and that could be. Wouldn't wonderful. it? Yeah. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't you like to be a fly on the wall for that friendship? <laughs> That's great. And then, yes. About, what about the um, uh, engravings by Jordan uh, or Jordan Grant? Gordon oh, is Grant? there more in the chat that I'm not paying attention to? No, I'm just, I'm just asking. They are, they're signed, the illustrations, the pen, the pen drawings. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are from Roland. Those are from uh, Songs for American Sailormen. They're the illustrations from her book. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I devoutly hope that all of this is covered by the doctrine of fair use which allows you to book. use material if you provide commentary upon it. Oh, that's, that's fair I use. Isn't that what fair use is supposed to be for? <laughs> mm. this, is, this presentation is what fair use is supposed to be for, yes. I just covered this in my property class and I can assure you that you have added sufficient um, artistic contribution to the material that it would be covered. Illustrated oh. with, Thank you, with song. Yeah. Thank you. Illustrated with song. Absolutely. Cool. That's right. That's great. Mm -hmm. Well, unless there are other questions, I'm going to call it a night because mm -hmm. uh, it's been a long week and it's school tomorrow. I'm expecting a call from the coast, <laughs> the, <Ooh. laughs> the, the Pacific coast. So I may have to be up for a while, but um. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, but uh, it's least, so fun to say that. At least that's where my mind is, is on that side of the world, so. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. Great. Good thank presentation you. as always, Lynn. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Sorry I was late, but I got here. Oh, glad to see well, you, Well, glad to have nice. you. <laughs> nice to see you, Bill and Carol. And <laughs> oh, as always, good to see you all. Yeah, yeah. you too. All right. Mwah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. There she is. Nicole. Nicole, good night all.